So there she is, the new motorcycle. I've got this till at least uh, mid-January. I'm hoping I might be able to extend it for a little bit longer as well. But uh, yeah, this is this is my new motorcycle. How many miles has it got? It should have only nine miles, nine miles on it. So it is absolutely brand new, you know, apart from like a PDI check. So. I actually asked Suzuki if I could run this in myself because normally on these press bikes they run them in and they give them to you but I thought I want to do a full, you know, the full experience of this machine including running it in, obviously bringing it back for a first service, you know, the full, the full Monty but I mean look, it's a good looking bike isn't it? It is a really good looking bike so obviously I was on the launch uh, of this in Portugal and in Portugal didn't really feel like it had a proper go on it you know it, around that sort of Lisbon area where we did the launch the roads are, there's a lot of traffic the road surface is brilliant and couldn't really see if this was as sporty as I hoped it was going to be I think the tyres the, the thing of having this bike is I think the tyres it's got stock aren't the best ever and I think the profile of them isn't sort of aggressive enough so I'm gonna probably once I've done the running miles I'm probably gonna change these tyres to something else a bit more sporty something you can lean on a little bit more obviously I'm hoping to get some luggage for this as well because what's the point of having this sort of crossover if you've got no luggage capability so uh, I can say I'm at Milton Keynes I'm at Suzuki GB my first bit of uh, running miles is going to be getting this thing home which I think is about 120 miles from here now because I'm running it in I'm not just going to go and sit on the motorway that's the worst thing you can do so I'm going to take it home the back way so join me and I'll, we'll talk a little bit about sort of how to run in a motorcycle well how I run bikes in and there's lots of you know this is a massive subject everyone's got a different idea how to run a motorcycle in but this is how I'm going to do it and how I have done it with other new bikes I've had so uh, set yourself down get yourself a cup of tea and job C roll the intro we can uh, head home now I am going to need some navigation because I know how to get on the motorway but I'm going to be going all a little back way so I'm going to use a bit of the old uh, Google Maps avoiding motorways type jobby to get me home and obviously also I'm going to let this thing warm up fully before I uh, set off so she's fully warm as part of that running it's all about sort of heat cycling the bike as well so uh, let's run her in let's warm her up and then we'll commence with the run in so when running in a motorbike one of the main things you have to do is make sure you don't load the engine up don't load it you know don't lug it don't put it into a high gear there's the indicators there they are most front brakes need a bit of bedding in oh they feel extremely new. So running in a motorcycle, I mean, if you research this and search online, you'll see there's a million and one different bits of advice from, from everybody on how this should be done. You know, it's, uh, I mean, if you read, obviously, most people would go by the manufacturer's recommendations of, of how to run in the bike. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I tend to do, if I'm honest. I know you've got people who say, oh, no, no, no. You want to do a, you know, a hard break-in rather than a soft break-in, whereby you sort of, sort of basically, you're thrashing the bike from the word go. Because the whole point of breaking in an engine is, you know, you've got to create a good seal between the piston rings and the barrels. That's, that's the main reason you meant to run it in you know you got to create that seal and it used to be you know back in the day you'd get a different oil to do the run in so you'd get a you'd get like a rather than like a semi-synthetic oil like a really good oil that reduces wear you'd have a more of a basic oil whereby you want the wear you want wear between your piston rings and your and your pistons go on go on love you 
you want that wear but I'm not sure with modern engines when they come from the factory whether they come with a, a running in oil or not I mean you could it's really difficult to find out what manufacturers actually do as part of their you know how, how the bikes are set up and they come from the factory because I've also heard rumors that you know they have a special oil filter on and I think it's BMWs I heard this about that the oil filter can only be used for a maximum of a thousand miles or it just sort of disintegrates you know why it doesn't have a you know a normal oil filter on I don't know if it's doing anything special or it's extra filtration for that first running period but you can't leave those filters on for any longer than a thousand miles or they disintegrate you know, so it's all sorts of different stories and some people will tell you oh yeah but the bikes come from the manufacturers fully run in you don't have to worry they've already been running at the factory you know and that that just simply isn't true They've been run up at the factory and they've been put on a little dyno and just run through the gears to make sure everything's working. Yes, that has happened, but they haven't been, you know, run in properly. So, um, so yeah, so this is, this is interesting and, you know, there'll be various opinions. So the idea of the hard braking is obviously you really rev the engine and you get it to get that to seat really well between your pistons and your cylinders, your piston rings and your cylinders and it's a nice seal and you know, the bike will make more power later because also it's it's looser because it's been thrashed, everything's a bit looser you know and obviously if it's a race engine then yeah that could well be the way to go because you want maximum power over anything else don't you but for me I just feel that uh, a more gentle approach is better for a bike and engine you want to last and you're looking at longevity at bit more than out and out peak power figures from the engine you know so for me I prefer to do the gentle approach as I say the first hundred miles I think is what's really critical and I know people have even said you know after 50 miles 100 miles you should actually change the oil so you should then actually change the oil because you know the, that most amount of engine wear and the most amount of debris which is created as as everything works together and interacts with each other all those metal elements but it's those metal fragments so people say you know you really you should change the oil after 100 miles put some new oil in you know because 600 miles is just too much really because you may find there's a fair bit of debris within the oil which is then getting run around your engine over and over and over again for that first 600 miles that's what I'm going to do on my Ducati when I run it in but I'm not going to do it on this you know it's not practical for me to to change the oil on this but I think that is actually a very good idea but then that that, then that raises the question what oil should you put in it do these bikes come from the manufacturer with a special running in oil or are they just on their standard specification of oil you know so then you don't really know what to put in whether just to put a, a semi-synthetic into it probably loaded that a bit too much then <laughs> you know or, or do you put something else in it you know so it's a bit of a tricky one well we're now 46 miles in to my journey home still got 91 to go so this windy route is <laughs> considerably uh, longer than the direct route on the motorways but it's been fantastic been some amazing views some amazing roads i'm no clue where i am absolutely no clue where i am but yeah i'm absolutely loving this the bike's brilliant this suspension as i mentioned it's i've got it back in the in the mad mode the medium adaptive damping and uh you know, for these little pothole crappy roads it's really really nice I'm still riding it the same I'm sort of I'm sort of opening it I'm not overloading it but I'm, I'm sort of revving it up to sort of five and a half six thousand revs you know up through the gears I'm sort of coming off and letting it rev as I go down on the blipper as well the front brake is now starting to bite nicely I mean the, the brakes aren't brilliant on this bike you know it's a Suzuki they're not renowned for having the best brakes ever but that is actually starting to feel quite nice so yeah the tyres are obviously getting bedded in now as well 
But yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. We've got 23 degrees outside air temperature, so it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day. This is vaguely familiar now. This, this route is getting vaguely familiar. It's nice to sort of, sort of out of the bends, I sort of winding it on a bit. And for starting to give it a little bit of work. I don't want to be too, too gentle with it. It's a Suzuki, it will last forever anyway, no matter how you run it in. I know that uh, the guys at Revzilla, Zach, Zach and Ari, is it? I think Ari, they did a very interesting test whereby they took two identical brand new engines. Now, admittedly, these are only, I think, CB125s. So they're only like a single cylinder engines are not really equivalent to like a high performance four cylinder engine you know only a very basic uh, engine but they they tried to put this to the test and they did a a hard braking and a soft end braking on two brand new engines and then once they'd done the miles they stripped the engine down and measured how much wear there was within the engine and everything and what they said was there was no discernible difference between the engine which has had the hard running and the engine which has had the, the gentle brake in. Whether it does anything, whether you could really just lay into your engine and ride it pretty much normally from the go, quite possibly, quite possibly. But when, you, when you're investing that much money in a new motorcycle, I think you've got to give it the best chance possible from the off, haven't you? And just by taking it easy for the first 600 miles, I don't think that's too much to ask. Unless of course it's a press bike and they just get ragged, ragged to death from the off. <laughs> so that is what we're going to do here. We are going to take this pretty gentle for those first uh, 600 miles. Then I'll take it back to Suzuki, do an oil change, and then you're good to go basically. I know some, some manufacturers say you need to do then another 400 miles of slowly building the revs. Again, it's all just whatever you want to do, really, isn't it? End of the day, it's, you know, it's your bike, run it in as you want. There was a really good video um, from the BMW factory about how they build. It was the S1000RR, you know, at their high-tech factory, what they do. And obviously, they do all the casings and everything uh, at BMW. But what they, as far as running them in, what they actually do is the engines are dry run, so they're basically spun up not on fuel they're sort of on a motor and they connect all these pipes to the, the the outlets and the inlets of the engine to seal it and just make sure when they spin it obviously it's not no no airs escaping from it it's you know it's sealed and tight so it gets spun up on this machine and then once the bike's all built it sits on that dyno and they just run it through the gears to make sure you know it's running as it should be and there's no issues but it's not you know it's not fully running yeah. with a brand new bike you're not just running the engine in you're breaking in the brakes you know everything the whole bike you're you're, you're the gearbox you know, everything you're you're breaking it in it's not just about sealing the pistons piston rings to the barrels and you know the other internal parts the whole bike is being broken in like i say those brakes they're feeling a little bit better already where I've slowly put a bit more into them. Oh yeah, it's, it's everything. You're breaking everything in. It's a brand new, everything's brand new. So some really good roads around here. I must say, Cali Moto app, it's fantastic. We're just getting you on some back roads like this. It says I'm not going to get home until seven o'clock at night like this, so. So I might end up having to jump on the motorway at some point. It's a very comfortable bike, like this, I have to say. It's very comfortable. The suspension is nice, you know, it's, 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 I've got it set to a person with luggage because I remember that, you know, it's a little bit soft standard. And what I want to do with this is, as I mentioned, I want to change them tyres. I want to get a, I think these are a 50 profile tyre, the standard. I want to put a, a 55 on. So, it, you know, because I think the front end of this bike feels really nice. So this is something from the launch. The front end is very precise, 
I mean, it only weighs 220 kilos. This. Now, it's not a heavy. It's not a heavy machine. Very similar weight to the BMW XR. Very similar weight. I mean, I think that bike is more sporty, though. One of the reasons is because of those tyres because of the more aggressive rear tyre and this has got the Dunlop Sport Smarts on and it's not the best rubber in the world so we'll put something a bit more sticky on it a bit more aggressive on the rear and, and to pitch the bike up a little bit because as it is you know you need to go into the maximum preload setting of the shock to to get enough height at the rear to tip the bike on its nose to to make it a little bit turn in a bit faster so by fitting a 55 to the rear that should pitch the bike up and uh, you know really really help with the with the handling yeah it's got a nice feel to it though as i say very very comfortable the suspension on this very comfortable especially as i've just tipped off the the MXR, I've got that in the garage as well at the moment, so this is obviously going to feel like a much more comfortable touring machine compared to the MXR, which is just nuts. But I'm interested to see what I can do with this, what I can change on this, how I can get it to feel by the time I've modded it. I want to get a smaller screen, because I'm 6'2", that screen is at the height, whereby I get all, it puts all of the air into my helmet and I get a lot of turbulence. So what I'm going to do is probably get a smaller tinted screen, you know, a bit like the, X, the MXR has, so a little funky little screen. Because I love the look of these sorts of bikes with little screens on. And then of course I'll get a bigger screen if I want to do a bit of touring. Pyramid Plastics do all these, so if you're looking for different screens, have a look at Pyramid's website, they've got thousands of them. A little, a little bit of revs. Keeping it in the mid-range, keeping it below 6,000 revs for that first 100 miles. I mean, this is really rough, rough old back lanes. And yeah, it's very comfortable. It's very comfortable, the suspension, I have to say. So it does the comfort very well. What I want to see is how does it do the sporty? Because this is a sports crossover. Well, I've just stopped for a little bit of a stretch. I've been doing about two hours. I spent two hours non-stop on it. Got about 100 miles on it now, I believe. Let's turn it on again. Just did a quick battery swap as well. So, uh, come on, come on now. Tell me how many miles you've got left. There we go. I've done 100 miles with it. 101 miles service in 500 miles. So I'm 100 miles in. Half tank of fuel used. Absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it so far, I have to say. Really, really good. So it's going to be quite interesting, my uh, six months with this bike. You know, I'm going to be using this as my sort of everyday machine. I've got to go somewhere, so it's a bit of a load lugger. Uh, look at the view here, it's gorgeous. You know, a, a bit of everything. I think that is, that is what these bikes are all about, isn't it? It's a bike which can do do everything and that's what we're going to be able to that's what we're going to look for that's what we're going to be trying to achieve with it seeing how it fares up and trying to do everything so if you're interested in the uh, the new gx and don't forget if you want to see how i get on with it you're going to subscribe below and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys <laughs>